All right, guys, let's take a look at a very popular brand in the microbrand world and certainly just in the watch community entirely is the Brew brand watch. This one is the Retrograph Technicolor on the Beads of Rice, which is, these are always sold out. Every time he makes a new model or, you know, a new colorway or even just re-releases the existing, they get instantly sold out. They're just, I'm, they're seriously, they're that popular. Like if you don't know about them, I'm shocked. But uh, big thanks to one of my founder members, Mark, for sending this over. He sent over that Sharky uh, Orange Monster and uh, what else? He sent over the Steel Dive that I had on too. But this one here I've been really excited to check out because I've talked to the owner of Brew, I think, email or something like that. And we were always going to like have him send one over for the channel. It just never happened. So it's kind of cool to actually have one on the channel now. Even even if just for a short moment because Mark wants his watch back as soon as possible. So uh, I'm trying to get this video done so I can get it back to him. Um, unfortunately, I would like to just keep it, but that's not going to be in the cards. Um, as of today, when I made this video, the this same watch, but on the leather strap, was still available. I think they're like three fifty. This one's four fifteen on the beads of rice, um, which it's nice on the bracelet, but I think it'd be good on just a regular strap, that leather strap or whatever. Um, either way, and you could buy another bracelet because it's a twenty two millimeter lug with, so you could throw a different bracelet on there. Not a big deal. All right, let's get into the specs on the watch. I went ahead and started the chronograph on it just so that's running while we're talking. So 38 millimeter wide, 41 and a half millimeter lug to lug. There really isn't any lugs. It's basically just a square uh, block of 316L stainless steel with uh, some holes in it so you can fit the watch and the pushers and everything, right? So uh, on the website, they claim like 10 point something millimeter thick, I think 10.4. I measured it with the sapphire crystal at 11 millimeter thick. So it's 11 mil thick, which is still really thin for a chronograph, although it's a um, quartz chronograph. 22 millimeter lug width here. And like I said, you know, you could do a strap option or any, should be able to fit most straight linked bracelets on there. So go ahead and, like for me, I'm a little tapped out on funds right now, or I would go pick up the leather uh, strapped option of this watch. It's only $350. Uh, that's a lot of money for a lot of people. I get it. But for how cool and unique this watch is, $350, I think, is a legit deal. 50-meter uh, water resist, and it, the movement is a Seiko movement. It's called the Mecha Quartz VK64. Um, if you've never really looked into that movement... I'll try to put a link in the description to an article if I can find one that's uh, pretty easy to read. Um, you know, it's it's a pretty fun, cool movement. And that's why you see it, it, and it works really good. It's just a great quartz chronograph movement. And, and then it has a little trick up its sleeve with adding some mechanical bits to the quartz instead of uh, fully quartz. That's when we reset it, you'll see it. It like snaps back. Um, okay, so... What is this watch really about? Well, the brand name should tell you a little bit. Brew, right? So if we look at the markers here along the chronograph path, because that's what that's for. Those fine markers are going to be for chronograph. The rest of it, sure, minutes, hours, all that good stuff. But those fine markers there, that's to keep track of an espresso shot. I don't know much about espresso shots. Um, I use, I forget what brand it is, but my buddy Mimo gifted me one. And then um, some of my really, really close uh, watch buddies that I talked to multiple or throughout the whole day actually gifted me a um, some coffee uh, that I, I can grind up and I can make my own espresso shots. So I don't really have to time it. It's kind of automatic. But if you are timing them, the optimal espresso shot takes 25 to 35 seconds so essentially this is timed out really tight to 30 so that's right in between that 25 and 30 so you want to hit that target of 30 and then as you can see here as you get closer to the maximum in that optimal range it turns orange to warn you like hey you should have completed this task so um, it's pretty cool to have that 
on the watch because it just ties in with the brand and the whole concept of it and everything. And I'm sure there's other styling cues on this that most um, coffee heads, uh, baristas or whatever you want to call them, will pick up on. Uh, I, I don't know it. So uh, if you guys know it and you're, you're spotting them, then chime in down in the comments. Let me know. So there's a look at the pushers and here's a look at the case back. So minimal information, but I mean, it's the information that is really what you need, right? I, I like that it's added on there, extraction timer. So four screws holding that stainless steel case back down. That's how you're gonna get that 50 meter water resist. So just a clean, simple, good looking watch. So, you know, let me zoom back in. I know that probably disorients you guys. So if we stop it and then we reset it, it all just snaps back. That's that mechanical part of the quartz chronograph movement on this. Uh, should be a non-screw down crown here. You can, you know, push pull it and adjust the time and the date down there at the six o'clock. I like the balance of this dial. I like that the sub dials are also essentially the same shape as the case. Um, it just it just works. It's just a beautiful looking watch. I would like to see some maybe more funky colorways in this. I think uh, there's a few different models that Brew has, but I really like this one. And hopefully I'll see the other ones eventually too. They even have an automatic three-hander out that looks really cool. But I feel like this is the one that needs to be really exploited with some funky colors and just some more fun uh, options. Uh, it's definitely on my list, and at, like I said, at only $350 for the leather strapped one, I'm going to own one at some point, just not right now. Let me pop this on wrist real quick so you can see what it looks like on my seven and a quarter. <clears throat> it's not sized for my wrist, so it's fairly lightweight. I'll try to put the weight down in the description. I know uh, Zombie Rob said that I should be putting the weights in the in my video on it. It's not part of my routine yet. I will work on it. I promise I will try to include the weights as well as the size for these watches. But on bracelet, I think the bracelet adds a lot of heft to it, obviously. Um, so this thing on strap is going to disappear on your wrist because it's really not that heavy. But it has everything that you want, you know. It has the sapphire crystal so you can actually wear it and do a little bit of work and not worry about damaging it. It also has that really fun, cool thing that I tend to enjoy where... The crystal's pressed directly onto the case. There's no intermediate bezel. So I do like that feature as well. Which is probably going to be more common in weirdly shaped or you know non-circular watches. Just because uh, to, to have that extra piece of bezel or something like that. It's another thing that has to be machined out and everything. <clears throat> so this has C3 loom. Let's kill the lights and check that. And then I do want to compare it next to a watch real quick so um yeah you can definitely see the loom it's mostly obvious on the hour and minute hand a little harder to see on the loom plots but guys i mean you're this is not a loom junkies watch that's not what this thing is intended for let me grab my skx so you can see because square is you know you hear 38 by 41 and a half but because it's square, it's just, it, it's hard to really capture what the watch is going to look like on wrist or at the size. So here it is next to an SKX. And I think the case shape design, when you deal with rectangular watches, they work on so many levels. They work on smaller wrists. They work on larger wrists. They just, they work so much better than... You know, like a, all these weird different sizes for dive watches that have the bezel, which really throw things off because of how wide the bezel might be or um, just so many elements that go into a dive watch that change the way it's going to look on your watch. When you have a non-diver watch, I think they're going to be way more universal across wrist sizes. And that's where this one here at only 38, you know, I like the, I mean, even the lug to lug is shorter than I like for a width of a watch. But yeah, this thing, I put it on wrist, and I'm like, yeah, I definitely want one. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Big thanks to Mark for sending this in, and I'll catch you on the next vid.